Monday. Good morning. It's Monday, April 5th, 2021. And welcome to Savannah Community Headlines Live. It's a weekly gathering around the virtual water cooler. We've been doing it a year during this pandemic. Um, but we are excited to be streaming on a bunch of different platforms. Not only is it on the Marjorie Young uh, social media platforms, the Catalina has lined up the other two. <laughs> Yeah, we have a special, we've got always a shout out to the Isle of Hope News and Team Yannette over there. And of course, the uh, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce here in um, in Savannah. Good morning to Alfonso and the rest of, of the chamber. So good. So yes, thank you very much. But um, before we get going with everybody here today, we're going to go around the room and we're going to introduce ourselves in about 30 seconds. Let us know what you're going to be talking about today. And then I want everybody to answer the question, what is one thing that you're really proud of that nobody knows about? So, Hunter, I'm going to start with you. Oh, great. <laughs> I was right. hoping that I would get to, to lead off this. Oh, no. Um, oh, hi, no. My, my name is Hunter Ginn. I am a business consultant. Mm -hmm with the University of Georgia Small Business yeah. Development Center. Um, I've been with the organization for about seven months now. Um, I'm gonna be talking briefly today about our Start Smart series, which is going to kick off uh, later this yeah. month. And one thing that no one knows about me, yeah. that I'm proud of, um, I actually co-host a podcast called Radical Research which talks about the experimental and fringe elements in rock music. And two years ago, we were the subject of an article in Rolling Stone. Whoa, nobody knows that. That's so cool, Hunter. Thank you for sharing that. that that's why I love this question. That is really fun. So thank you. Okay, Ryan, let me pull up Ryan here. Let me get you on the screen. Hey, Ryan. Good morning, Good morning Marjorie. How are you? Very good. I, uh, I'm Ryan McCurdy. I'm very excited to be here for the first time. I'm going to be talking today about Savannah Rep, which is South Georgia's only fully professional nonprofit theater company and, uh, and our plans to make a big splash downtown in the next couple of months. Uh, I grew up in Marietta and I've been, uh, my association with Savannah just hit two decades a couple of weeks ago. I, wow. I wrote, I, yeah, I wrote down on Facebook the day that I first, or, uh, on, um, Actually, first on a piece of paper and then on Facebook, the day that I moved for the first time to Savannah, and I said, this is the most beautiful place that I could ever imagine, and it still is. Um, and something that I, well, people know about this thing, but I don't think a lot of people know that I worked on it. So I was the lead attraction designer on the Prohibition Museum in City Market, which is my moonlighting career as a designer of uh, technology and theatrical interaction. So that's something, if you've ever been there and enjoyed their wonderful drinks and the very, very cool museum, that's something I'm very proud of. Another really cool thing. Oh my gosh, Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Barbara, let me pull you on the screen here. Please introduce Hi, yourself. Good morning. I'm Barbara Thomas. I work with uh, CEO as uh, CEO of Faith Equestrian Therapeutic Center here in Dighton, Georgia. Um, I'll be talking about our programs a little bit later. And I'm very proud of having worked with Habitat for Humanity in Northern Ireland to open the first free store in Europe. <gasps> that was you? It was. That's so cool. I just love this question. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, wait, we got a comment here. Hold on, Hunter, Hunter. Can you answer that? Where can we learn more about your podcast? Hunter? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the link right now. Okay, okay. N Nadia said, thank you. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, let, 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 let. Hold on. There's Chris Helton. Let's have Chris go next here. Hey, Chris Helton. Long time no see. Good morning, week. everybody. Good morning. It's good to see you. Uh, so, my name is Chris Helton. I'm owner of uh, Silverline Films. Uh, originally from everywhere else, was in Savannah, Georgia for about 15 years, I think. 
Yeah, you were. Uh, our company a lot. Yeah, we did a lot of work um, before YouTube was a thing. Marjorie and yeah. I were putting together videos as fast as we could, knowing that uh, the internet was going to be the next big thing for uh, company awareness, community awareness, things like that. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, film finance and some of the strategies that I have developed in order to help uh, filmmakers in the $5 million and below range to get their films uh, actually produced. Uh, one of the things people don't really know about me is uh, I was in the Marine Corps for six and a half years. I got out of the Marines and started a very short acting career. Um, they kind of led into the film business. So sometimes Chris, it's fun and like, I enjoyed it. Chris, you know. people also don't realize that you're on the big screen now. I am. I shot a, uh, I shot a film called Deadwater with Judd Nelson um, in 2018. Uh, I directed it and produced it. And um, yeah, selling around the world. You can find it on Amazon. <laughs> Sure. Oh yeah, you can. Oh yeah, you Where, can. Sometimes I'm scrolling through the video, you know, scrolling through Amazon, and my movie will pop up. It's kind of, kind of surreal. It's cool. Yes, Chris, you and I are working together really before YouTube. Um, yeah. I mean, under Google Video. Uh, I remember you coming yeah. in and videotaping Howard Morrison at the First City Club, and you know, once YouTube came on, we had to transfer all those videos that were shot oh. and upload to YouTube. So yeah, Chris and I go back a long, long way. So anyhow, thank you, Chris. And let's see, Josephine. There we go. Let me pull Josephine. Let's have you introduce yourself. Hi, I made it. I was like trying to get time. Um, I'm Josephine Johnson. I'm a songwriter, a musician. I travel around. I'm in Savannah a whole lot. I freelance with uh, Savannah Morning News, so you might see my name um, on a byline or two. Um, but I'm here to talk about the EP that I have coming out April 15th that I recorded with Andrew Sovine, who lives there in Savannah. And um, we're just doing a really, we're doing the best we can get out right now. Cause like, I think everybody in the world is it during the pandemic. And so uh, everyone now is trying to get it out into the world. Something, uh, I had a teaching fellowship in China. And while I was there, I um, did my own brand of journalism over there. I got a VPN, get over the firewall, and a blog. And I went all over China videoing and doing journalism stuff in addition to teaching. So that was in 2011. Awesome. And Josephine, um, you are about to launch a really, your how many albums is this now? That you're going to be launching. I think this will be the fourth one. I, so I, I've got a picture of one of them. Which is this the upcoming one? Oh yeah, that's the one that's coming out. Yes, yeah. I don't know. I to, I'm like halfway put together today. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's it's interesting. The first time I ever talked to Josephine on the phone, it was about an article, and I asked her. I, I said, you sound like you sing. She's got a voice like Jan, you know, just talking wise. She sounds like Janis Joplin. So um, she said, yeah, I actually do sing. And I said, yeah, I can hear it. I can hear it. And I, I want to, um, I did download a music video. I'm going to play just a little bit of it, if that's okay, Josephine. Sure. Okay. So yeah. this one, it's called Reclaiming My Time. Is there a story behind that? Oh, I mean, no, it's just for anybody who's ever felt like they've wasted their time doing things they shouldn't be doing, and it's time to take your time back and do what you're supposed to be doing, what you want to do. In your All right, here we go. This is... said yes and should have said no let me all on those times i stayed late really wanted to go but now i'm taking back what is mine let me all on those 
couple times I played small So you could think I was less, you were more Now I'm up from the floor Yeah, I'm back from the brink And I I'm taking back what is mine I'm not wasting song Josephine that is that is wonderful you've got a beautiful beautiful voice and what's really absolutely what's really cool is the folks on the on this show this morning I, I don't know if we want to call it a show there's so many here that it could be really good networking and that could help help you get the word out and help you like Hunter with SBDC I mean I don't know yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm always looking for more connections and more ways to get the music out. Someone was in film, um, Mr. Marine Man. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Marine Man. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they call me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they do part. now. <laughs> my business card. It's like, yes. I yell when I hand it to him. And I bet Ryan, there's some synergy there that with the new um, theater. Oh, I've been a Josephine Johnson fan for a very long time. So yes. Oh, tell us about tell us about what what other songs you love. Who I am. Well, actually, I think Josephine, we were originally introduced through it's that it's that wild thing. We were introduced through the paper, and then it's something that's so great about Savannah. And I mean, we've already found in this like five minutes so far is that everyone has these multitude of talents. The, the question is, you know, it's just which one are they pursuing at the moment, which I think is something really beautiful about the South in general, but especially Savannah. So I, yeah, I, it was Josephine, I think I was, I had Googled you after we had talked about something for the paper and there was just this whole incredible world of your talent, which is so wide and awesome. So. No, that's right. I, I did a story um, on the, the theater years ago i remember yeah. yes it's all coming back i totally remember oh my gosh yeah i recognized your name i don't I, i'm i don't know i often feel like i'm kind of really this kind of unassuming person i'm like well i do my own booking right so i'm always having to like introduce myself and do all the things so i just walk into a room figuring that nobody knows who i am <laughs> No, Josephine. I mean, when I had talked to you, you were in Tennessee or something. Get I ready. To... I was. I had this yeah. Week. Yeah, that was that was a wild. That was a crazy week. That was nuts. So what is that instrument you're holding there? And is it part of your new launch? What is? Yeah, I, this is my tenor ukulele. It's a mainland ukulele. Um, they're handmade in um, Nashville, Indiana, of all places. And um, I just I I always, you know, it's like my best friend. I brought my my instruments with me to the office for the podcast, so um, I have it here. Is that is that part of your new album coming out? It is. It is. I have an instrumental song called In the Field, and that's one of them. Yes. Oh, that's, a that's beautiful. Your The sound is a little hard on, on with your connection, so I hope folks could hear the, the video that I played better. So anyhow, yeah, it's breaking up just a, just a little bit. So anyhow, Josephine, thank you for, for that. What's your next what's your next performance? Okay, let's see. Um, I will be back. Oh, um, Sunday, I will be at Go Coast Distillery. From okay. Or yeah, I'm gonna do like a Sunday afternoon thing at Ghost Coast. So awesome. Yeah, awesome. if you're around, come get drinks and hang out. It'll be fun. That will be fun. That will be fun. And and Ryan, is that close to where your downtown new? Um, theater is it, it's actually ghost coast is a sponsor of of savannah reps uh which is great because we love having sponsors and also because it is i, I think i'm allowed to say that the product is exceptional like i think i think 
the product is, whether or not I'm allowed to say it, the product is exceptional, and they have such a cool listening room. It's actually as far, it's as far west in the downtown district, sort of the Broughton Bay area, as we will be east. In fact, when it opened, when Ghost Coast opened on Indian Street, it was so nice. It was really exciting to see the, um, the business uh, development going that far uh, down uh, west. And so we are actually taking over a venue at Broughton and Habersham Street, which is the former Acura dealership. And we're very excited because it's the it's the oh, it's I know the, right where you are. Yeah, right. We're going to be just between uh, 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 shout out to Funky Brunch and uh, and five spot. We're going to be right nestled in there, but it extends the business district oh. one more half block. And we we thought initially we thought initially, obviously, our first our first concern was the, the neighborhood. So when we held our first open house, I think it was three weeks ago now. We wanted to be available to to hear whether they were concerned about having you know operations in that building, and they and they showed up, and everyone is so excited, and we 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 kind of we 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 just it was such a great jumping off point that their excitement propels our excitement, and it's very symbiotic in that way. Awesome. Now, what kind of um, theater will you be doing? Well, you know, Savannah Theater, who I've worked with a bunch of times over the last two decades, they put on just. And and I do and I do owe Chris Bass a bottle of bourbon. So here here's here's the problem, Chris, is that uh, uh, on the show that Chris uh, we run a show from the Savannah Rep Facebook as well using Streamyard, and yes. on the show that and Chris won a bottle, and uh, our friend Geneva Carr, who's a television uh, actor, uh, she also won a bottle on the same thing. So I went down to get Chris his bottle and couldn't get there in time, and then found out they don't yet ship to New York, so no one's got their alcohol yet, so I apologize, Chris, but we're working on it. Okay, good, good. Dang but, uh, and, but you know, ne ne never at all moment. Oh, so uh, Savannah Theater's been putting on these, you know, incredible uh, musical reviews, as well as they do these incredible book musicals. Uh, so what we're gonna enter the playing field with is what we've already been doing for the last almost half decade, which is really, uh, really focused and uh, and and just high intensity American dramas as well as new American playwrights and uh, we want to get into the musicals game a little bit more we the two that we've done so far are little women and uh, uh, pump boys and dinettes which is by uh, co-authored by Jim Wan who is a Tybee resident now which is just that that sort of amazing Savannah atmosphere of these incredible people making this their second or their you know future home. Uh, and so we, whenever we stage, because we're a black box rather than the Savannah Theater, which is that very traditional proscenium setup and a very deep stage and a lot of seating that goes back, because we're a black box, we re-examine musicals inside of the context of like how do we how do we use a modular space to tell this story? You know, Little Women was was a very small space, but our director Jen Bishop really filled it up beautifully. So uh, we have four show main stage seasons. We try to do a musical, and I'm very excited. I can't talk about it yet because uh, we don't have the licensing squared away, but I'm very excited to say that we're uh, going to be collaborating with the Savannah Philharmonic for the first time next year as well oh um, and and doing a fully a fully orchestrated musical, the title of which we hope to be able to say soon. Um, but it, it's something that I've always wanted because it's something I grew up with is that feeling you only get when a full symphonic orchestra is playing uh, in the pit. And we're actually going to put the Philharmonic on stage so you can be blown away by Kataro and the performers and the chorus. So anyway, yes, I get very excited. So uh, that's, that's what we've got Ryan, coming up. Ryan, what what is your background with with acting? I mean, did did you grow up in that environment? Were your parents actors or? They my my parents my parents could have been. I think that that's the important thing is they they could have been. My mom my mom's my mom's an incredible singer. My dad is. My dad is a is very funny in his own amazing way, and I picked up his sort of dry sense of humor. Um, no, it was I, I was the first I was the first of the McCurdys to kind of jump wholeheartedly into the arts. So I did children's theater growing up, and then uh, went to SCAD uh, twenty two thousand two to two thousand six, and then uh, in two thousand six, before I had graduated SCAD, and I, I'm not necessarily recommending this as a as a good career plan. While still trying to finish my degree, I opened. Uh, co-founded what uh, ended up becoming Muse Arts Warehouse down on on Louisville, uh, and so and so was trying to 
trying to graduate at the same time as run this theater company, which it was, it was a, a crazy couple of months. Um, uh, so that's my background. Then I've been in, I've been uh, splitting my time between New York and Savannah for the last almost 11 years now. So I have a place. I'm actually in New York right now with a show that's up in Times Square, uh, the very first of its kind, actually uh, post pandemic. And then I'm headed back down in another week or so to start selling the theater again. So I've got another question for you. If somebody's watching and they would like to either be part of the acting and how do they buy tickets? I mean, how does that work with your, your group? Absolutely. Well, we, we welcome all, all new actors. You know, we're, we, we like to say that we're not a community theater, but we are decisively a theater for our community. Um, nice. A lot of, a lot of regionals, a lot of regional companies, uh, do what's sort of called the New York poach, which is that they cast their shows with a whole group of people that fly in and, and sort of take over the, the theater. And uh, the mission of the bishops, who were the founders, co-founders of the space originally, their mission is very, was very clear and has been kept very clear, is that they, they want to engage the community at all levels. So it's as easy as emailing, and this is, this is a fun email address that I love. If you email what's up at savannahrep.org. That is sort of a clearinghouse you can say. You can do everything from say hello to ask about auditions. We have people submitting plays to us all the time, which we love. Um, so I would say that's the easiest way to get, uh, and Chris Bass is doing my work for me. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, but that's, that's the easiest way to get a hold of us acting wise. And then we're hoping to return to live performance as soon as uh, September. I'm knocking on wood, but that's the plan to return to live performance in September, at which point tickets are always available on our website, savannahrep.org. So that's us. So, so with all of us starting to get vaccinated, I mean, how will you, will you be checking to make sure we have vaccines? Or I mean, how, I mean we're, we're about to open up, and there's a lot of questions of how we're going to be opening up. So. Well, you know, interestingly, and I'm really glad Chris is on the show because I think there's a really, there's a really amazing relationship that can happen um, uh, and that we want to help with because the film industry is always, the film industry has been so well represented in Savannah for so many years and it's, and it's this huge industry. Um, and so that was sort of what we had identified originally is that uh, it, we, we thought it was time for Savannah to have a theater operating at this level of, of fundraising and expense. Because if you think about it, theater is the last fine art that doesn't have a professional nonprofit presence in the downtown box. I mean, we have, you know, this extraordinary film festival, we have one of the best music festivals in the world, but there has not yet been a theater uh, that's nonprofit. Obviously, Savannah Theater is, is a for-profit institution. So for film artists, being able to work and collaborate with theater artists is really great. And, and one of the things that a theater does that helps the film in its city is, in, especially during this pandemic, we've had this influx of, of expats from New York and Los Angeles and Chicago, people settling for the first time. They're bringing their union credentials and you know a lot of them want to keep paying into that union because they've got a pension coming to them in a couple of years. Um, and as a result, as we're the only company in the region that's able to offer those contracts, um, it helps keep our new, uh, our newly moved uh, population here, offering them the ability to work in their field and get into films and be able to go that easy, easy drive up to Atlanta. But you and you asked about PPE. I shot a TV show in Atlanta about a month ago, and they have already figured that out. Like the TV and film industry, they're they're roaring. I was in a room, I was in a room with probably 50 people, and I felt completely safe. It was just that combination of um, just really rigorous testing, thoughtful, yeah, thoughtful use of of rules and practices. Um, so the good news for Savannah Rep is that we actually we only have to respond to the national mandate. Like we are not in that sort of. I know that the Mises went through this with Savannah Theater. Like they they don't have a mandate, so that they're like, when do we when do we reopen? Right? Yeah. They had to make that choice for themselves, and I know it was agonizing because you don't want to be so fast that you get someone sick, but you don't want to be so slow that you aren't giving people something they desperately need. Um, so we, we take our cue from the Nash, from the Broadway League. And as a result, um, the good news is whatever, I don't know what our reopening practices are going to be because we're going to be told what they have to be. I would imagine by September with the level of vaccinations where they are, we'll be able to do 
moderate social distancing and probably masked audiences for at least the first part of our new season. But uh, I would hope by January when we open the new venue uh, that a lot of these practices are going to be things of the past. So Ryan, you are an entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> you are. And what's really cool is we got SBDC on here. And Barbara, you're also a SCORE volunteer, aren't you? Besides. Find that on mute. Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, so I serve with the uh, Beaufort County in, in South Carolina. I, these are two of my favorite um, nonprofits, folks that can help small businesses. I mean, if you have a mentor and you get this type of free help, it shows you're going to make more money. So, you know, scores available here, SBDC is available here. Um, Hunter, you, you're here to talk about some actual classes, right? I am. I am. Uh, briefly, though, I'll just talk a little bit about SBDC for anyone who's unfamiliar with us. Uh, we are an outreach arm of the University of Georgia. We're funded both through uh, the Georgia system as well as the Small Business Administration. We offer uh, no cost consulting services to small businesses of all ages, um, from startups and pre ventures to businesses that have. Are, are in growth phase as well as to professionally manage businesses. We are known for doing forecasting on the financial side, business planning, but we offer an entire range of services, everything from human resources to marketing. We actually just brought on a new consultant, Nadia Osman, a few months ago, whose uh, expertise is in marketing and whose demand has already been demonstrated very clearly. Uh, we do QuickBooks help, um, strategy planning, essentially anything that falls under the umbrella of a small business need, we do and we do for no cost. And I, I'm very grateful to be a part of this organization. My background is in commercial and SBA lending, and I've worked with SBDC for a number of years. And to be on the other side of the table and to be able to offer those kind of consulting services uh, it is something for which I am certainly grateful. So specific to these classes, um, we're offering a couple of really exciting things that begin this month and will roll over into May. The first thing is our Start Smart series, which we've been doing for a number of years. The best way I can describe it, and I'm essentially purloining Becky Brownlee's description of it, is a, it's a mini MBA. Um, this year, in response to the pandemic, we will be doing it virtually. Uh, typically, it's done in person, but as a result of the, the virtual context, we're offering it at a very, very steep discount. Basically, you get eight modules uh, spread out over four weeks for $99 that covers everything from uh, strategy planning, marketing, both on the, the digital and the, the online and traditional platforms, human resources, uh, operations, uh, management planning, lending, the whole bit for $99. And uh, I believe we're still accepting applications for that. And that will be running, I believe, from April 13th to May 6th. And we'll be doing two modules week for four weeks, then I am actually going to be teaching a class by myself um, beginning on April 15th, um, and it's about small business lending. And, you know, Marjorie, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier um, mm -hmm. about, you know, the, the mystification around the, the loan process. And, um, it, you know, a, a lot of times small business owners get into this and they're overwhelmed by what seems to be a very um, arcane uh, series of steps that, um, that get you to the financing stage. And the point of this class is to uh, really kind of unmuddy some of those waters. So we're going to be doing two classes that are really kind of geared toward, toward small businesses that are in 
either the pre-venture stage or um, the, the growth stage. Um, the first one's going to be a business basics class, a business lending basics class, where we go over the fundamentals of the business loan process, kind of break out some of the, the steps that the borrower can expect to experience the expectations on the lender side. And then in May, we're going to be doing a follow-up class that is the advanced aspects of commercial lending, where we talk about specific SBA loan programs. We're gonna be talking about specific commercial loan programs that are offered through traditional financing conduits. And these classes are go both going to be sponsored by TC Federal Bank, and their senior lending officer, Trapper Griffith, who some of you may know, he's been a fixture of the commercial financing sector here in Savannah for close to two decades now. He's going to be on both of those uh, classes with me. And at the end of those classes, we're going to be doing a 30 minute Q&A session where if there are any additional questions that aren't addressed in the actual content, we will be happy to answer. So we have a question here. How do we get started with the SBDC? 26 years ago, I got started with them. Uh, I picked up the phone and I called the SBDC here in Savannah and I got my mentor. And at that time it was Lynn Voss. And even though I've been in business 26 years, I have mentors with SBDC. I have mentors with SCORE. And if you're a small business owner, it, it it moves the needle. Make sure you are surrounded with all the help you can get. And, and if you if you have a consultant, uh, the one thing that I love about this organization is sort of the, the symbiosis of all the different consultants, because typically a consultant comes on with one area of expertise, mm -hmm. but across the state, we have just about every area of expertise covered. So if I can't get you an answer, I can get you in front of a person who can get you that answer. So Chris, I mean, um, Hunter, is this the right phone number? I, I think there's a local phone number. No, there's, there's a local phone number. Um, it's 912-651-3200. Um, okay, Liz, we'll, we'll post it and we'll post it up there for a second. And I know- and I believe that and I think I provided a link to our statewide website earlier. Yeah, she will put it back up there. Hold on a second. Um, yeah, she's putting it up there. Hold on a second. There we go. How about that? Is that the right number? A uh, three two zero zero. Three two zero zero. Okay. Whoop. Hold on a second. <laughs> so, excellent. Excellent. Hunter, thank you so much for that update. Again, SBDC, you guys are located down on Oglethorpe Street, correct? It's Oglethorpe and Houston in the, the Crawford Square complex. Right there, screaming Mimi's Pizza. Unfortunately for me and, and my slowing metabolism, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I avail myself of that pizza entirely too often. I know. Well, it smells so good every time I go by there. Okay, here's the right number here. Six five one thirty two hundred. And thank you so much for having us. Anytime really to be here. Anytime we need to get yes. the word out that there is help with SBDC and there's help with SCORE. By the way, the water cooler, the fourth Monday of every of every month, SCORE is going to be hosting this water cooler session, and they'll be talking about. Um, They'll be interviewing small businesses. They'll be talking about things happening with SBDC. So, you know, make sure to connect with Michael Siegel. Um, just, I mean, you got a whole hour just to um, help small businesses. So, so in the same vein, Chris Helton, you're very involved with financing, with the movies, with with films. Tell us, let us hear about what. Yeah. You're so, it, and it and it kind of started with the the baseline of uh, the Small Business Administration, working with the SBDC, with Becky. Um, and it, you know, I wanted to give them a, a quick plug because when you're starting out a new business, and, and I've seen this with producers, a lot of uh, producers or filmmakers get overwhelmed with um, all of the information that comes in, running a business, it, it is called show business. You can't just go out and, and borrow somebody's money, uh, tell them you're gonna 
make a movie about snails and it's going to make a billion dollars and you're going to get their money back that way. You can't do it. You have to have some kind of understanding of how the film business actually works because it's a business. But the, 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 the guys at um, SBAC uh, and SBDC are there to give you confidence as, a, as an entrepreneur to the next step and to have the, uh, the hand on your back to kind of push you into that, the next realm. Because starting a business and being an entrepreneur and being on your own is very, it's, it's sometimes very scary. Um, you believe in yourself and you take that next step you've got these partners here uh, and, and the free resource to actually use them to build up who you are and where you are going. So if you don't use them, that's, that's a wasted resource. You need to make sure you understand what they can help you with. So when you go in there, you know exactly what to ask for um, and uh, understanding who you are, where you are with the business cycle, uh, with your business plan, and start from the end, like like what what Marjorie and uh, our friend Diana Morrison always says. Start with the end in mind, and deconstruct everything backwards. But that's what the the SBDC and uh, you know the small business <coughs> folks are there to help with that process. In um, <coughs> I guess in 2016, I had been working on a film in Savannah. I was going to do some location scouting. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, they, uh, the film didn't actually get off the ground, it, and it had some it had some issues. Um, but I had had all of this, uh, the contracts and things that were put together for this film already, and I had showed it to uh, another friend of mine, Rob, whose cousin worked at a bank. It was a Synovus branch. And she looked at it and said, guys, do you realize that with this kind of contract, we actually have an SBA program that will work for you? It completely floored me because I had, when I started my company, I got a 50000 when I started Silverline, I got a $50,000 loan through uh, First Chatham Bank. SBA loan, 7A. It, it, 7A loans are what they are. It's paperwork. It's a lot of. It's a lot of. Um, you have to understand the the procedures, but it's nothing to get afraid of, right? If you believe in what you're doing, go through the process and start to start to you know build your company. So I got a fifty thousand dollar loan. I understood the SBA seven A program, and then somebody actually, um, this this person was the senior vice president of the bank said. Here's another program that nobody's actually using. Nobody even hardly knows about. Like in the entire United States in, in 2019, only $50 million was actually used for this program. And, and, and normally, SBA programs, there's billions of dollars that get used for these guarantee programs. So it's a, it's a relatively unknown program. That, is it just uh, for films? No, is no, no. That's the thing is that, that's the thing is that, that I, you know, being, film is a very niche kind of uh, stream, but what she saw created a crossover, right? She says, you have this thing here. And, and the number one issue that has always been that block between a banker and a film producer is that the film producer will say, can I borrow money to make my movie? And, and my film needs money. Well, bankers do not want to invest money into a film, right? They don't, okay. they don't do that. But what bankers do, all banks, they lend money to companies who make product. And so, you know, like I said before, if you understand what the package is, then you can understand how to talk to people about it in a different aspect. And that's what this banker did. She looked at it and said, guys, you have a specific contract and the, and the contract through, it, through an unknown SBA program can be guaranteed by the federal government. 
gosh, Chris, that's huge for it filmmakers is, in it Georgia. It is a game changer. For all over the country. Yeah, it's a game changer throughout the country. So what is the actual name of that loan with SBA? So if there's any filmmakers here, like Josephine, I bet she's going to do another film with her music video. I mean, it's, what? What is it called? And and I, I've been working with a group out of Nashville, and they're looking at doing this for um, uh, music videos, and, and they have they have a, a, a larger group of clients that they're um, trying to promote. But it, it absolutely works for music videos as long as there's a contract. So the program is called the SBA Cap Line, C A P Line. Okay. And it's a contract cap line. It's a line of credit. Um, and it lasts, you know, it's, it's, it can be a revolving line of credit. Um, you pay off that contract and you replace it with another contract. The SBA minimums uh, don't exist. So if you have smaller productions, 10,000, 100,000, a million, uh, that's fine. But it goes up to uh, a maximum of uh, $5 million loans. So let me ask, um Hunter and Barbara, these questions. Um, how many film producers are coming in to ask for mentorship with this huge push and tax incentive in Georgia? Are you seeing a lot, Barbara? Well, I'm working in South Carolina, so I'm not. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hunter, how about you? I'm actually not right now, but we would, re but that could just be a, a symptom of of film producers not knowing that our services are available. Um, but I, I'm glad to be here and very, very eager to talk to anyone in that industry. And Chris, you're, you're so right. Um, being in, I came out of banking and there's often this sort of communication barrier between a business owner and a banker because bankers tend to think of things in very tangible terms. It's like you say, bankers lend to, to businesses that make a product. And when you're dealing in abstractions, sometimes a banker's mind can't quite get comfortable with that. And that's, um, I went to the S, I went to the SBDC, right? I talked to Becky, and and I gave her all of this information. And you know, when producers make a film, or when when they when they go out to make, uh, you know, tr to try to pull in funding for their film, they're told that they have to have this huge. Um, uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's a uh, private placement memorandum, right? And so it's like a hundred pages long, and it has all kinds of of extemporary junk in it about how this movie that I'm going to make is going to be bigger than Blair Witch or something crazy like that, right? I'm going to take a hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to turn it into a hundred million dollars. Now give me money, right? And so they come in with all kinds of junk in this big fat plan that they've worked on for so long. Well, the reality is the banks don't care about what what performance is going to be at a theater in Malaysia, right? The <laughs> banks want to know, I'm going to I'm going to lend you this money. Uh, when are you going to pay me back? And what's my collateral? Period. Exactly. Right? And so I How are we going to get repaid and what's going to happen if you can't repay us? Exactly. Exactly. So <laughs> I, went to, I went to Becky and she said, she, she took this big package and she goes, get rid of this and this and this and this and threw everything out. And we ended up, we ended up with exactly what we needed to show anchor. They're very specific, right? I, I have, I have a lot of loans that I need to look at today. I need you to be very succinct in how you're you're giving me this information, executive summaries, bios, and give me the cash flow. How much are you asking for? What's your budget? And what's your timeline of giving me my money back? That's it. You need and to compress fun. everything and not overflow with information. Be direct. And that's and perfect that's advice. What SPDC did for us. And that formula that they created. Now I go with all of my other producers that I work with that come to me to ask these questions, I help them formulate a smaller, very compact business plan specifically tailored for bankers for the eight. They have to understand how to talk to a banker. And this is the only thing that a banker cares about. They are not going to read your script. They don't care about who's in your movie or who's attached to your movie. It's, it's fun to talk about and, you know, after work, 
but they don't care who's going to be the lead in the movie. They want to know who's going to bring my money back. Chris, this is a game changer for film producers because that to me is always the number one hang up is how do I fund the film? And it is. And, and that's the thing about it too, is that I have to talk to a lot of these producers about um, the production company, right? You're breaking up and, here. And get them into the mindset that the, the production company is the one that is actually getting the loan to make a product. And there's, it's kind of nuanced, but you're not, there's some kind of odd separation with this. Like they don't understand that they're actually running a company yeah. instead of just, you know, making something. And yeah. that entity or that thing is actually the money process. Yeah. It's, it's a weird situation, but uh, it's something that I have to deconstruct with a lot of the producers. So Chris, if, if there's a producer out there, can they get in touch with you right here at this? This is the right. I think it'll go to that. Um, I could put my, uh, I normally. Th Liz, Liz will add it. She'll add the uh, email or the phone number there. And um, all right, while we're doing that, I'm going to talk to Barbara about fake equestrian. And hold on a second. You got that up there. All right. No, hold on one second. Here is. That's how you get in touch with Chris Helton about if you're a, a producer and you need to figure out how to do some funding. So through the SBA, there we go. All right, thank you very much, Chris, for, for sharing that information. Georgia is on fire with all the productions it, and it is up a lot since compared to last year during the pandemic. So this is, this is good information, thank you. All right, Barbara, let, we want to hear about what's happening over at Faith Equestrian. Well, thank you so much, Marjorie, for having uh, me on so I can talk a little bit about Faith Equestrian Therapeutic Center. We are in Guyton, Georgia, and next month we'll celebrate 15 years um, offering equine-assisted activities and, and therapies to um, disabled uh, youth and adults um, through the power, what we say, the power of the horse, um, both in um, equine assisted activities and also riding. Um, it's open to children and adults with physical, mental, or emotional disabilities of various. And we also um, work with mental health counseling. Um, this summer, we're very excited to once again be able to open our summer camp. Um, we have three summer camps. Um, we have one called Pony Pals, which is um, for our little biddies, uh, ages five through seven, um, where they just learn a little bit about horses and how to care for them. Um, then we have Horse Lovers Day Camp, which is for ages eight through 14. Um, that's a half day program, uh, five days a week. And then uh, Camp Ability is for our riders with special needs, and that's open to those who are 8 to 18. Um, we have two sessions of that this summer. It's going to be a very busy, very exciting summer here at Faith Request Again. You know, Barbara, um, working with uh, Bonnie, I loved, she was the founder of Faith Equestrian, and I loved hearing the story about how there was, well, this happens a lot, but how there was a, a young, male autistic writer and he he was nonverbal and he never had said a word before and once he started this therapy he ended up making his first words at faith equestrians i think he said ride on wasn't that the story Barbara? it is and there are many many stories like that as well um we are um a united way agency we get funding from them, but also from donations. And we keep our uh, program at a low cost, our budget very low by the use of many, many volunteers. We're so grateful for our volunteers who come out and work with both the horses and the students and um, just generally taking care of our 10 acres. So Barbara, what is, what is the, 
how does that actually work? I mean, the horses are they're huge, but there's there's so many people that absolutely get results with this kind of can I call it therapy? You I mean, can. Um, therapeutic activities is what we say. Um, I mean, how does it work? Um, well, the 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 instructors are trained and certified by an organization called PATH International, okay. and that so that in itself is you know the the organization that that lays out the structure of the lessons. Um, when you think about riding or just interacting with a large animal, there's a lot that can be learned in terms of cognitive, mental, intellectual um, work um, to help students with their focus, with help them with following directions, mm -hmm. help them with finishing a task, learning how to finish a task, just simple steps. Hunter is shaking his head, I see, because he has some familiarity uh, as well with, with um, uh, horse therapies. Um, uh, so, so the example, you know, one of the examples we can use if someone is in a wheelchair, their back muscles are not going to be weak, but, but by riding a horse, by having assistance help, you develop strength, you know, in, uh, you know, as, as you practice and time goes on. Well, you're doing beautiful work out there. It really matters. It really moves the needle. If somebody has, when is your next fundraiser? I know nonprofits are um, We're going to have a, a tea out in the arena, a high tea. Um, in, we haven't set the date yet, but it will be up on our website very soon. Awesome. Either late April or early May. And it will be partial celebration of our 15th anniversary. Oh, that's a press release. Yeah. <laughs> Send in a press release. That is, that's huge to be in business that and long. Thank you so much for your consultation. We really appreciate that. We I have sent out a press release about our two new board members and about our new staff. I started in December. Our program director started in February and um, our volunteer coordinator in March. So we are a brand new staff and rare and deep. My hashtag should be, that's, is that a press release? I mean, just <laughs> That's right. small businesses leave so much news on the table. And mm -hmm. as Josephine knows, I mean, the, the media is always looking for interesting stories to write about. So um, okay. don't leave news on the table. Don't leave news on the table. Very good. What else do we know? Thank you, Barbara, for, for that. Um, Liz told me, you know, we always talk about... Uh, the animal is for adoption, but I think this young guy, Sage, has already been adopted with Coastal. Yeah, we Pet. have a new, <laughs> we have a new one. We have a Staffordshire Terrier mix this morning, Nala. Is that that's not Nala? Is no, that Nala? that's not Nala. This, this young fella, she was adopted, I think. This one. Yes. So we, who do we have? We oh, have God. Nala. She's a Staffordshire Staffordshire Terrier. Uh, about five months old. Let's see, Nala is quite possibly the sweetest dog you'll ever meet. And she's got some cute ears and she looks very, very, um, she's very animated. Let's see, loves life, everything in it. Always has a smile, never met a person, child or dog she didn't like. So she is over there at Coastal Pet Rescue with Lisa Scarborough. It looks like she had a broken leg when she was younger, but they have pulled her up and got her all ready to go. She knows basic commands. And um, I guess she's been over there with Lisa since about October, but she's all healed up and you would never know she has any issues. A cute little dog. Awesome. So Liz, put the, Liz has got the link in the, in the feed below so you'd be able to see her. And, Okay, we also want to give a shout out to N Market, the golf tournament that raised one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for the two hundred club and Make a Wish. 
a wonderful community partner here in beautiful Savannah, Georgia. Also want to give a shout out to the Savannah area realtors. They raised $26,000 for numerous nonprofits around here. And um, we just have the best community. Uh, let's see. We also, this is um, the Savannah master calendar. Shout out to Marianne Popnell. She's got some real interesting things posted here. On Tuesday, April 6th, uh, Savannah Chamber has a power hour at 11.30 a.m. at Savannah Country Club. Wednesday, the 7th of April at 5.15 p.m. is the Maritime After Hours at Tubby's Tank House. And Thursday, April 8th is at 9 a.m., the Kessler con uh, Collection there will be a job there. So check out the Savannah Master Calendar. We've got lots of information there. Make sure you post your good news there. And what else, anything else that y'all hear in the community that we wanna share? Stuff coming up? I actually was reading this past week and you know, my youngest daughter is on spring break this week. So I've been scouring the what to do calendars in Savannah for things to do. And it's not this week, but it's coming up. The Telfair, um, which I love, um, is having their family free uh, weekend coming up. I want to say it's it's like the fourteenth. It's the it's the it's the first teenth weekend of. I want to say it's like the fourteenth or something like that. But if you check their website, it's on there. Um, okay. And they've got this fantastic uh, Picasso. Um, exhibit that's there and they're doing a lot of cool things with kids and such. I should have had that full date before we got on, but you made me think of it just now. But yeah, they have a, fee a family free day every month and uh, this month they've got some really neat stuff happening. The, the new executive director is a brand new member in our downtown Savannah Rotary Club. So mm -hmm. I will definitely ask him about that. Ryan, we have a question for you. That question is from my dear friend Carmel. Hello, Carmel. I uh, it's actually that's a that's a it's a great question. Yes. So the Times Square show it's the the first of its kind that that the union has allowed uh, because it's it's streaming still, but it's being done live multiple times a week. So we're we are trying to figure out what our what uh, Savannah Rep can do in that vein. I will say. Uh, in in parallel to our fundraising campaign, we'd set a we'd set a line in the sand that we needed 100,000 in individual donations to move forward with a new venue. And we set the date of June 1st as that's when we uh, end our due diligence with the Kaminsky family at the dealers at the former dealership. I'm happy to say we're a third of the way through that period and we're already halfway through in our race. So we're 50,000 into our 100,000 uh, for June 1st. To that end, I think it's 32, 32 of our former alumni performers from shows from all from the last five years or have all come together to do a benefit performance of You Can't Take It With You, which is a great classic American comedy. And Chris Bass, who was on earlier, he, he has decided to try something insane, which is we shot it over Zoom in this very similar format, but, um, but he is cross-editing everyone. So every act, the entire cast changes. So you see a brand new company of our, of our performers from Savannah and Hilton Head and Brunswick and and Beaufort and you know just everywhere it's going to be an incredible excursion and because it's going to have that immediacy because we did shoot all of those interactions live um and and so you're going to get that sort of theatrical immediacy that has lost a lot in this era and, um, and ryan the only thing i have to say to that is there goes the adirondacks what's that chris there goes the adirondacks there goes did you do that show in your in your acting career chris that was that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, high school. Last show I did in high school as a senior. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Mary, McKin that, it's Mary McKinley's final line on stage. There goes the Adirondack. There go it's, a, it's a great play. And, you know, uh, we wanted to do something as big and as funny as possible because we know, you know, we do a lot of serious work, but we know right now people really need to laugh. So it's going to be available on our website in, I hope, two weeks. Uh, but to answer... Uh, Carmel's great question. That's that's our response to to being able to try to create something in this crazy moment in time. It is crazy moment. I hope everybody watching is getting lined up to get their vaccine. I got I got the J and J. Um, I'm one and done. Um, you know there is the Civic Center now. 
definitely go downtown and, and get it. It's really that easy. Hospice Savannah has set up there and is making it super easy to, to make an appointment and, and go in. And um, next week, uh, the, for Water Cooler, it's going to be all about health. And Deja Williams will be hosting it. And I think Carmel will also be on there. So then the week after that, uh, the third week, is Mifuna with I Volunteer International. And if you haven't heard about this nonprofit organization, they have the coolest app. You can be anywhere in the world. And let's say you're visiting Italy and you want to volunteer with a nonprofit to get to know the, the area. It will geo track you and any nonprofit that has posted you know, help that they need, it will connect you. So he actually launched it here in Savannah last year, and it's on fire. I mean, it's just such a great service for anybody that's a nonprofit that needs help with fundraising or whatever. It will match you up with this app. So Napuna will host that on the third on the third Monday, and then the last Monday will be score. We'll be hosting the water cooler. So. All right, guys, we are right at the top of the hour, 10 o'clock. I want to wish you all a happy Easter Monday. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you for coming on. And we will see you all next week. Bye for now.